medicine is a wonderful art, but it is in trouble. When we doctors go to work every day, we know that one third of the care that we will provide will be completely non-value added, futile. That over a third of the care that we should provide will actually not be given, it will be missed, overlooked. And that the third cause of death in most Western countries is not road accidents or diabetes. It is the honest mistakes we make as health professionals going to work. We all, physicians and patients, deserve more than that. It's time for us to inject some precision, some certainty into these work processes. Imagine, imagine that you had a gift that you could see into the future, that you could look at someone and know that something bad is going to happen to him and that you could do something about it. You could give him a different path that would take him out of harm's way. Change his life course. What would happen to medicine and healthcare in a future like this, when people can actually see into the future? Instead of going to see your doctor with your ailments, she will call you one morning and say, hey, how are you today? Great, you'll say. Oh, good. Please don't be alarmed, but in 12 hours, you will have a heart attack. <laughs> so why don't you come over to the office and we'll fix you before the symptoms begin? Now, I know, you think it's science fiction, but it is not. It is happening every day in this country, as well as in others, in massive scale. Let me give you one example of how such preemptive medicine looks like. Some of you have friends or family with kidney failure going through dialysis. You know how painful and debilitating this condition is and how wonderful it would be if you could have come earlier, years before, before the symptoms began, make small difference and made them not go through this painful path. Well, in order to do that, you need to predict which patients will actually go there in five years. They look fine now, they feel fine, we should predict who it will be which is exactly what we did about seven years ago. We used a massive amount of health records that's held by Israel's biggest health provider, Klalit Health Services. And we used all of this abundance of data to find those patients, and we asked our physicians to actually approach them, bring them in, and give them care at such an early point. And our data suggests that the rate of dialysis have been dramatically dropping in the last few years after this intervention in this subgroup. Now, we're trying to do the same now for other diseases, for diabetes, for pneumonia, even for cancer. We're fortunate to be able to do this. This is non-trivial. You know, in other countries, they do not have universal health care. They do not have such massive amount of electronic health care records spanning back for years. And they surely don't have the technological hub that we have in this country. I don't know if you know, but in this country, there are more startups, medical patents, scientists, and engineers than any other country around the world. So this is why people have already termed the coin for this country the digital health nation. Perhaps you asked yourself, how does this prediction actually work? Now, not always can I see into the black box, but in some instances we can, and I want to give you a glimpse. So at one time, we wanted to predict which patients would eventually have osteoporotic fractures, that mean brittle bones that break. And we wanted to identify them early, so we did our prediction thing, and the computer insisted that one of the key factors was eye disease. Well, obviously a mistake because I know from med school that those two have nothing in common. They're not associated, but the computer insisted. And then it hit us. It's not that the eye disease make bones more brittle. It's the visual impairments that make people fall. And when they fall, they break. So computers are better than us in identifying such subtle patterns and accumulating them together. And that's how it actually works. So, we want to do more than that. 
more than predicting diseases. We want to be able to select the right treatment for every patient. But this is not a simple thing. This is a balancing act. You see, in deciding on the intensity of treatment, too much is bad. Too little is dangerous. And the optimal point in the middle where you should stop pushing is individual. And this is basically the art of medicine. To make this call, we try today to use evidence. But there's a problem with the evidence that we have because the evidence that we get from the literature is average. But the patient in front of us is not average. None of us is average. And this is why medicine is an art. Every person is different, everyone is unique, and they need personal fitting. It was one of the greatest physicians of all times that have said the following. If it were not for the great variability between individuals, that medicine might as well be a science rather than art. So it's the need to personalize care that's what makes medicine an art. Forget the average. Use your clinical intuition to tailor fit. I know it sometimes there's a risk of human error, and it's really easy to follow the average guidelines, but this is not what you should do. Look at the individual. Clinical intuition is key. Or is it? Can we automate even that process? Can we do that? Can we turn the art into science? Well, think about the following. Last time you purchased something at Amazon, at the bottom of the page they said, maybe you'd like to buy something like this. Okay? What they did is they went for people like you that purchased the same thing and they said, people like you tend to buy this also. It works really well. Why can't we do it in medicine? We can actually look back at libraries of millions of patients and see what happened to them in the past to patients just like them out of millions and know what's about to happen to them. Imagine what will happen when we add to all of this data, genetic data as well, what we will be able to do. But we can do so much even today without the genetic data on everyone. We can do precision medicine, it is. About a year ago, we created a tool as part of a competition that was held by the New England Journal of Medicine. The tool we created, which we called iPredict, was actually trying to find whether the average is fitting for most of the people. And in that specific trial, what we found is that it is not. About a third of the patients in that trial were better off without the intensive treatment, despite recommendations, and we could know it through the models that we created. So, the competition went pretty well for us, and now we are trying to adapt this to many other diseases. So it seems to me that even if it will take some time, computers will account for the biological variability be between humans better than doctors. And so in such circumstances, is medicine still an art? Or is it just a branch of data science? What is the added value of a doctor? His data storage capacity and his processing powers are pretty limited, especially in the time that he has for your visit. So imagine how much can be missed. Imagine how much is missed every day. The path is quite clear. Slowly but steadily, we are looking at the end of the age of clinical intuition. We can resist the thought all we want, and it will take a while, but eventually, like the masters of chess and Go, when it comes to driving conclusions from the patient data, the greatest physicians of our time will bend the knee to their electronic sidekicks. Dr. House will yield to DeepMind. Sherlock Holmes will be beaten by Watson. But I'm sure that you feel 
that there's a point here that's missing. You know, the soul of this profession, the art, is not just about precision. It's about personalization, and by that I mean that the specific biological traits do not make a person. If you want to make medicine personal, you need to tailor it to the person, their goals, their preferences, their needs. It's not just their biology. That's what good doctors do. Can algorithms do that? Actually, the answer is yes. To some extent, they can do even that. As the mathematician Kathy O'Neill said in a TED talk just about a year ago, don't mistake algorithms as impartial judges. They are not. They are just opinions embedded in code. Algorithms are opinions embedded in code. And that's not a bad thing if we can get the algorithms to look at the opinion of the patient and put it into account. And this is of, I think, significant importance. Not just the opinions of the scientists and the doctors. And what will happen if we won't do that? Well, that's the difference between precise and personalized. Between medicine that looks into your biology and the one that looks at you as a whole person. It is a dramatic difference. If you fail to do that, the most precise advice that you will get will not be followed. Do you know that less than 50% of the drugs that we prescribe are actually being taken by patients? Less than 50%. And that's what's happened when you don't tailor your treatment to the patient in front of you. And what will happen if we'll have a wonderful algorithm, extremely precise, that will give you the most precise treatment that would actually be 3D printed in the physician's room for you. And you will not be part of the decision-making process. You will go out to the physician's room, you will take the pill box, and you will drop it in the nearest trash can, just like has happening today in more than half of the cases. Because it's precise. It's not personalized to them. We've actually made a little attempt to do this in our iPredict uh, model, and we allowed our patients and their physician to adjust their treatment according to their preferences and the weights. And what we found was a dramatic difference. When we accounted for their preferences, the algorithm recommendation changed. So our profession as doctors is about to be truly disrupted. The days of the knowing all doctor relying on their clinical intuition are all but over. Machines are already doing much of this in an extremely precise manner and will override clinical intuition very soon. The art of medicine is not in precision. It is not in the deduction skills. That will be the key. It is in the humane part of healthcare in caring for our patients and partnering with them to figure out the right path for them among many precise options. We can, and we are training algorithms to do some of it, but only some. And that part of the art of medicine is going to last for quite a while. So, in an era where computers are already decision aids and will become very soon decision makers. And when this is what the virtual doctor's office may look like or feel like, still the most important technology in the physician's bag, although sometimes neglected, a technology that holds great healing powers that may take decades to be replaced by machines, was and will be the human touch. I believe that in the future, even when we will launch the most advanced version of I predict, in order to feel safe, what we will truly want to hear from our navigator in our time of need, from our doctor, are two words. I care. Thank you.